Scorpio, this is your week ahead astrology forecast by Astrology Motivation from Born Without Boundaries. In these weekly videos, I review the major planetary aspects and transits, and then I'll let you know how they're going to impact your natal sun and what that means for your bottom line. Scorpio, this is for the week of August 1st to the 7th, 2023. I have all your info written down because you know me. I got to write it down. Um, we're going to start off really, really broad with all the big stuff, the stuff that everybody should be aware of, the stuff that's impacting us globally, definitely our communities, etc., etc. And then I'm going to focus things down into Scorpio specific energy that all Scorpio should be aware of. And then I will break things down into the three decans of Scorpio to help you understand how all these energies are impacting your natal sun in particular. Um, all you need to know to enjoy this video and understand it is your birth date. I will translate everything else for you. But because you're Scorpios and because I know all y'all already have your natal charts, it is best to get your natal chart, right? It's a fantastic thing to have your natal chart. So totally go, go grab your natal chart, dude. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, Scorpios. So the big stuff. Hello, full moon today, August 1st. We have a full moon in Aquarius that is um, square. Ooh, it's square to Jupiter. Now, what does that mean? Everything is more exaggerated. Everything is more sort of dramatic. Everything is larger and bigger. And this full moon will be no exception. It will 100% be more emotional and more tangled in a way, more complex, because it is in Aquarius and Aquarius energy likes to keep itself complex. It doesn't like to be necessarily understood as much as a constant enigma right so those questions might be bigger and the frustration might be bigger emotional times happen around full moons and we'll talk about how that might impact your natal sun but just generally speaking this could also exacerbate different kinds of social issues in our on our in our world right now i think generally speaking this is um, a purging kind of energy um, as all full moons are it is a great and powerful time to detox one of the best ways to detox around the full moon is to get rid of the things that are cluttering your life now when it comes to um aquarius energy this could be delete some apps right I mean, we don't even think about it right but this would be a perfect time to delete all those apps and get rid of all the memory you're not using or you're using for crap to just purge it and get rid of it sort of that tech energy that we we don't think of it could definitely be a great time for you guys to decide to just purge and get rid of those apps you don't use or that they're taking up too much space check your memory and your storage and make sure all that stuff is purged since Aquarius uh, Uranus energy does rule um, technology like brilliant brilliance and tech and and tech that connects us to those things outside of our realm of the five senses um, I think that it's really important to purge that around this time to make space and to just listen if you don't use them why are you paying for them if you don't use them why are they taking up any kind of space right what about all those apps that you're paying for? Are you really using Netflix that much? Are you, I'm not trying to say anything against Netflix in particular, but I'm saying, what don't you use? What don't you need to be spending $24 a month on? You know what I'm saying? Like, this is a great time to assess the value of things in your life. And I don't say that blindly, but um, the value of these technological things in your life, uh, because the full moon is in Aquarius, but also because Venus is still very much, um, very much active in retrograde and asking us to reassess the values and what we value, what we spend our value on, what we put our attention into. You know, we also have Venus uh, square to Uranus, which is a sense of have we wasted a lot of money on tech? How have we thrown it away? Or what's sucking our funds out of our banking accounts that we don't even know about? right it's a good thing to look into now absolutely also venus can be agitating things when it comes to the love and romance issues this sense of shake it up i don't want what i usually want i'm not looking for what i usually look for and you know what that's good because honestly some people are like well i gotta type i gotta type you know what your type should be the person who loves you and respects you and actually gives up about you 
that's what your type should that's really the only type you should have and i know that attraction is attraction physically but your physical body will follow along with what your mind tells it to do so if you allow yourself to focus on those attributes of people who really value you and people who are really valuable people then your physical body won't overwhelm you or take over that much and make stupid decisions for you again so i'm trying to say these are all topics that we should be allowing to purge and reconstruct since we do have the nodes now in aries and libra there is that sense of i don't know what is partnership to you what is your identity to you can you identify yourself without partnership and without partnership are you really fulfilling your fullness as your individual there's a collaboration that happens they're not two separate things they're actually one right if we look at them as a duality we start to think of them as two separate subjects but they're actually the same subject which is how do we organize um how do we organize our contributions on this planet is it all about our individuality or do we put it to work with partnership as well and how do we maintain the healthy balance i mean that's going to be a big subject matter guys for the next year and a half as those nodes will remain in aries and libra for the next year and a half so we should be talking about them especially um especially right now and i'll get to why so we have we have hold on hold on hold on i'm gonna get to why oh we're gonna get to mars and i'll talk to you about mars is in a really interesting position this week to the north and south node that is really sort of energizing our um creating an energy of power struggles and power conflicts and since mars is going to be a, a sesa quadrate or i just call it a sesa square a frustrated energy to the north node and semi square which is sort of a stubbornness toward the south node there is that potential for what do we have in a power struggle with especially when it comes to our independence and our relationships our partnerships libra the seventh house that sense of that sense of um i don't know have we gotten too complacent have we gotten too stubborn and yet we're not fulfilling our individuality in the partners that we're choosing anymore partners uh, power struggles in relationships could be very big right now so these are important questions to be asking yourself um on the sixth so the very end of this week the sun will trine the moon and the moon is going to be conjunct to chiron so we have this beautiful full moon in aquarius on the first and then um by the sixth the moon will be in aries and it will be conjunct to chiron this is especially emotional trauma and those those things that you've learned how you feel about yourself and those emotions associated with your own personal sense of self-worth and value because of what you've experienced and gone through has it diminished how you feel about yourself or has it made it stronger and made you realize just how strong you are this is really important energy and since the sun is going to trine this energy this is a very healing day there can be a lot of peace and happiness that comes from this day which um you know i'm kind of looking forward to to be honest with you um and by that point the sun even after the moon passes by the sixth the sun will try into chiron so this is definitely getting that stronger sense of self through our trauma learning through our traumas and learning to value who we are because of what we've survived and what we can teach others from what we've survived this is a very powerful energy because it means there's an optimism here um all week long the sun is square to jupiter mars is trying to jupiter there's still that contention of uh thinking we can do too much because also the sun is says a square to neptune so it could be we think we're doing too much and maybe delusions of grandeur that need to be challenged and delusions of grandeur are just this sense of have we overstepped or have we gone too much or the powers that be right have they overstepped their boundaries have they said listen we deserve so much we deserve to get so big and that's going to be kind of put into question now and also hopefully put into check mars is still trying to jupiter so there is that energy of we need to move forward and we should and we should continue to move forward because mars is in sort of power struggles right now there could be this impetus to take more leaps of faith 
um, take action and try to make some progress happen venus is trying to both the north node and chiron which is very lovely energy actually um, there is that sense of finding your self-worth and your own personal beauty as well as what your future is sort of reconstructing how you feel about how you value yourself and what you think is beautiful or what you think is appealing based on now what you've learned through your challenges in life those things may start to change you may start to evolve and be attracted to things that you were never attracted to before simply because of what life has taught you um, and then we have Venus squared Uranus which we've already reviewed that could cause a great so you're in other words you're not attracted to the same things anymore you're not attracted to the same type anymore your type is changing and this is a good thing so here we go what is the Scorpio specific energies that we should be looking at so Pluto is in Capricorn Pluto is your uh, first of all what's going on in Scorpio well nothing there's no major planets or luminaries or even asteroids no major ones in scorpio right now we have pluto here um, pluto is in capricorn still at 28 degrees it is still square the nodes just marking a major change or turning of the corner when it comes to um, our life journey our life path we also have the trine to uranus and the sextile to Neptune, which honestly marks huge technological advancements. Um, and then we have the Cesar square to Mercury, which is could be quite like um, disruptive energy, energy that like insists on being heard, insists on being uh, understood, is taking sort of an extreme action when it comes to any kind of communications. Um, just be aware of that this week. It doesn't have to be troublesome, but it is born of agitation. So especially when it comes to how you speak, there could be a permanence to it that wasn't there last week. Um, let's look at Mars. So by the seventh of this week, um, Mars will conjunct Mercury. But all throughout this week, Mars is trying to Jupiter, which gives us that optimism to move forward. We want to move forward, and it's good to move forward. Um, it says a square to Pluto, says a square to the North Node, um, semi square to the South Node, which we've already talked about. Um, you want to push forward, you want to push toward the future, you want a dynamic change, but you're also feeling blocked, which could come into that power struggle issues. Um, could cause frustration because you don't feel as in control as you normally want to or it could cause uh, butting heads like tr challenges with others because you're trying to take control the best way to use this energy is to definitely try to move forward and make progress and since Mars is also trying to Jupiter it's a really great time to do it but don't make it about controlling other people or defending yourself against them controlling you just make it about chasing that idea and getting something done so let's go into your decans shall we if you know that your natal sun is between zero and nine degrees Scorpio, it's in the first decan of Scorpio, and so your Scorpio ones. This usually correlates to October Scorpios, people born between October 22nd and the 31st. Um, your natal suns through the fifth, so through the end of this week, are sextile to Mercury. You're gonna have, especially with that uh, connection between Mercury and Pluto, you're gonna have very powerful speech this week. And for you guys, it's gonna work very, very well, almost exceptionally well. So it's definitely that time to take action through communication because your words will hit just the right places. There is, to your natal suns, there is a semi-square to Mars, so you could feel like you're a little bit drained of energy, especially physical energy. I don't think it'll get in your way that much. Um, but there could be a little bit of you need to just kick back for a little second don't push yourself too hard physically we have a square to Pluto which is long term trying to Saturn long term and a quincunx to Neptune which is long term all of that meaning that for right now you kind of you you are trying to work with 
the powers that be. You're trying to work within the establishment. You're trying to do things by the book that's giving you some level of comfort right now. There could also be you are looking majorly toward your career and you're finding a lot of success there. Um, whereas other things, you're butting heads in other places of your life. The square to Pluto could give you a very formidable energy to your character. And so moving forward, especially in your career, it's like carrying a big stick, right? In your career, that could work out very well, especially because of that trying to Saturn. But in personal relationships, this could be causing a lot of headbutting. Just an FYI. Let's go on to Scorpio 2s. So Scorpio 2s, if you know your natal sun is between 10 and 19 degrees Scorpio, you are Scorpio 2s. This correlates to November 1st through 10th birthdays. Um, hold on a second. I'm trying to figure out what this means. So, oh, I also wanted to say, hold on. If you are born around the second or third, your natal suns are square to the full moon. But this is also true for Scorpio ones who are born around the first or are born close, closer to the first. So just an FYI. But Scorpio twos, if you're born between the first and the third, your natal suns are square the full moon. What does that mean? There's an extra charge of like an extra challenge to be okay with especially social issues that have impacted you emotionally. And so there could be sort of a rupture there when it comes to what you need to say or what you need to stand for. There could also be just this sense of you're finding your technology starting to challenge you and you're taking it personally. And ultimately that will be for you, this would be perfect for you to go through your phones and start deleting those apps that you don't use anymore and check to see what you're being charged for that you don't really use anymore because technology could in some ways be challenging you by taking advantage of you in that way. So it's a good time to reassess your situation especially, but just expect that to be a particularly frustrating time for you. So that's today into tomorrow, just an FYI. Um, Scorpio 2's, your natal suns are sextile to Mars all week, so your energy is high. And your confidence and your physicality, um, just movement and grace, but also progress. It's definitely time for you guys to move forward. Um, you're going to be, as of the 5th, so at the end of this week, you will also be sextile to Mercury. So this is a really brilliant time to take action through words toward the end of this week. Um, all week long, your natal suns are square to the current sun. So you could feel like your ego is rubbing up against other people's egos or your confidence levels are a little bit challenged. But this is also great motivation to say, if I don't think I'm good enough at something, maybe I need to learn it anyway, try it anyway, or ask questions about it anyway. This would be a good week to do that. And your natal suns are also in opposition to Jupiter. So there is a sense of trying to move forward and wanting it to be quick and expecting. There's expectation of growth that may not be happening to the way, to the specs that you have dictated. Let's put it that way. Um, especially if you were born, but that's a longer term transit. And so in this energy for this week, I think there is this focus of really getting frustrated by maybe all the growth you've been trying to accomplish, right? Especially with technology. Please check that out and see if you you haven't been wasting money or space or time on certain forms of apps or app, like whatever it is. Just make sure, just an FYI. Um, 9th or 12th, if you're born around the 9th or 12th Scorpios, you are also trying to Chiron. This is a long-term trine, which is helping you heal at least in the long term it's helping you heal from different ways or comp ways that your, your self-esteem could have been compromised because of all the challenges in your life but there's a sense of now finding a way to heal from them and be comfortable with them or be okay with them um let's go on to scorpio threes so scorpio threes 
if you know your natal sun is between 19 no 20 and 29 degrees you are scorpio threes so your natal sun your birthdays would be somewhere between say the 11th and the 21st of november your natal suns are in a long-term sextile to pluto trying it to neptune and opposition to uranus what does that mean you do not want things to stay the same you are in a time of change you are looking for change and you are more than happy for that change to come and it's coming through psychic abilities and creativity and a deeply deep connection to your sense of spirituality right leaps of faith and the unknown and the unexplained you're not you're not accepting that this is really deep dives and challenging the norm and what has been accepted the normal like what has been accepted as your personal norm you know this sense of well i don't want to be defined by that anymore is sort of de defining your next couple of years actually but this week we have a um square to venus which means getting outside of your your skin and and challenging your challenging your personal norms and what you're personally attracted to so there could be a lot of wanting to step outside of your type or even your relationship because of not being content anymore with the same old same old boredom will not work for you right now it will really challenge you um and maybe it should and then we also have a, a quincunx to the north node, which means you don't really like the way things are going. You don't like where you're headed. You're frustrated by the, the outlook right now. And so maybe that's where um, your prospects are changing or your catalyst for change is coming. You let me know in the comments below, Scorpio, just how this energy is impacting your life. And I look forward to sharing a message with you over on Born Without Boundaries Tarot. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and then ring that notification bell when, so you know when I upload your favorite content. I will see you guys next week. Bye, Scorpio.